hello guys welcome to solving solutions your number one channel where you get solutions to all your solving problems it's nine seven in class again today how have you been we are going to look at um, something on the sofa today we are going to show you how you can get your one grid vector map you know um generally vector quantities are quantities that um, have magnitudes and um, directions right let's say magnitude and direction it's just the basics now the map we are going to work on is actually um a map from our grid data or maybe from our grid data that gives us the magnitude of flow right good it can be water it can be wind and maybe whatever the other um quantity we are trying to measure right good so for us to achieve that um, let's get um, the contour from it first so we just um, click on contour it um, navigated to the folder our gridded, our gridded file is right good that's our sofa grid then we try to open that so we have what we have our grid file somewhere here right good now i still want us to have um, a 3d representation of our terrain so let's um, also get the 3d surface from that same grid file so we just um, select that and then we open as well right good so we have um let's say a uh, multiple ways yeah we have two ways in which our terrain has been represented one is in 2d that's um, flat the other is in 3d right good showing us the exaggeration right good the ruggedity of the terrain now let us look at what the one grid vector so for us to be able to assess that um you come to what specialty then or special map right good you come to special maps then you come to what um one grid vector right good so you click on that you know one thing about um so far is that immediately you create a grid file okay a link to um how to create a grid file will be on the description section of this video because we've actually used them um, this particular we've actually created a um, grid file we've created them um, contour maps and some other representations right good so you can just um, check out that video to see how we got this our grid um, our grid file right good so we open that okay so how do we interpret this you know as we said earlier vector quantities are quantities that have what magnitudes and direction right good now we can see different arrows here let me make modification on this feeling um yeah it's actually filled let me change it to something okay let me see this good now it actually makes it a bit um, aesthetically okay right good we also have 3d representation here and then we have what the 2d representation then we have what the one grid vector map now you can see arrows like it's filled or it's full of arrows right good and the arrows are having different directions and different sizes so that is where the concept of vector comes in right good now you can see each of the arrow you know okay this set of arrows relatively are having equal magnitude and equal direction so what it means is that the direction of the slope and the steepness of the slope so vector map information direction and magnitude can be derived from one grid which we've actually done the arrow symbol points in the downhill direction. So let's look at arrow symbols that point downhill. You know, there are, yeah, there are a couple of arrow symbols that point downhill somewhere around there, right? Good now. And the length of the arrow depends on the magnitude or steepness of the slope. So, you know, as the arrow symbol points downhill, which we've seen somewhere around there, the direction shows us that it's actually what going down. Then the length of the arrow now determines what the magnitude of that steepness right good so how steep it is so um a vector is drawn on each grid node unless some nodes are skipped by changing the frequency settings so there is an example here that um if um, water is poured over the surface so this is actually a surface the direction arrow will point in the direction of water flow that means directions where the water flows right good from higher elevation let's say from high elevation to low elevation right now magnitude is indicated by the arrow length so definitely the water will be flowing 
but the magnitude yeah that's how much of the flow is now indicated by what the length so you can see that there is much flow here compared to there is flow here right so now i won't say all of this i think um control g will make it full good now i won't say all of this we can now use um, this particular 3d depiction to see how um, the steepness of the terrain which is um, by having a uh, one grid vector map um, would be better interpreted so let's see if we can overlay them so this is actually what map this map is vectorized so let's see if i can bring the vector over the three the 3D surface or the 3D surface over the vector. So let me put it somewhere like this. Good. So we have what I've actually overlaid what the two the two maps. So you can see from here. Okay, let me still come down to map tools. Oh, I can't use the trackball. I thought I could use the trackball. Although I've um, used the trackball to okay, good. I can okay. So let me use the trackball to get a better perspective of the terrain good let's see how that goes so you can see by using the trackball we have actually got in a, like a, a 3d like a 3d representation that shows how the terrain is undulating we have gotten that from the 3d surface however this now gives us the vertical exaggeration as it is supposed to be right good now when you look closely at this um, let me undo that when you look closely at this you can now see the arrows the direction of the different arrows and their magnitude right good so you can see at this point the direction is very very big the direction is going down rather and then the magnitude is small however when you look at this point you can see that what the direction is still going down and then the magnitude is longer comparing it to this other point or maybe also looking at this other point you can see the direction is coming down from here so this shows what as we have explained earlier the direction of flow maybe if water is poured on this surface it definitely will be going down right good so as it is going down that means it is going from an upper surface let me say yeah, upper elevation towards a lower elevation right good then the direction sorry the length of that arrow now shows the magnitude at which it goes down so by overlaying this um, our um, what do you call it one grid vector on the 3d surface it now gives us or it has given us what a better perspective of how the flow would be if um, water is poured on this surface right good as it will now be going from a higher elevation to what to a lower elevation so this is another way you can represent or yeah this is another way you can present or represent your terrain information right good so with this one knows that okay there is a flow direction it can be water it can be wind or whatever substance or maybe whatever that you know can be represented by flow or maybe that, that flow so with this you can know you know this is how it flows when it pours or maybe when you have it on the surface so we have been able to show you how you can um, create what a one grid um, vector map right good a one grid vector map from your grid data right good so when you've gotten this you can decide to present them together because i feel presenting them together or let's say overlaying them is actually very good and then you can also have it separately so that um, one can see the directions and the magnitudes and then when you overlay them one can now see the points directly on your 3d surface how what how they are represented right good so thanks for coming to class we hope we have provided solutions to this particular surveying or gs related problem we are going to leave a link on the comment section that sorry on the description section that takes you directly to sofa documentary yeah or is it documentation right with that so fast documentation where you can um, have um, an exhaustive um, explanation of how this um, one grid vector map works which we have actually um, accepted on this video so thanks for coming to class we hope to see you on our next video until then ensure you keep staying safe and have a very good time bye